Hey guys, I'm over at Bully Billows HQ. We're gonna review some products today and go through a lead walking video. And in the video, we'll be going over the slip lead and the Ramsey Range collar. Okay, so starting off with the lead walking, um, I've got the two-ended training lead and a three centimeter Ramsey Range. I recommend starting off with the Ramsey Range if you're an inexperienced dog handler or owner, uh, or you have a puppy or a dog that pulls a lot, because it has a limited slip and plenty of soft padding. It protects the dog's neck if they are going to pull a lot in training. So to start off with training, I always start off static. So you're just going to lure your dog into a heel and reward your dog heavily in that position, just so they're happy with that position being by your side. Uh, and get plenty of reps in for this. So you just lure your dog in, give them some food. And if they move that position, move them back in, give them some food, bring them back and reward them. So they're happy in that position. And once your dog's happy with that position, we can move on to step two, which is moving. When you step off, I use the word heel, just so the dog gets used to that word. Don't worry if your dog breaks the heel position straight away. It doesn't know to stay in that position yet. So um, with repetition, it will come and the dog will stay in the position for longer and longer each time. Heel. Remember to reward your dog a lot while you're walking around. I don't tend to pick a point while I'm walking. I just walk in a figure of eight. So you don't get set on going anywhere and the dog doesn't get set on going any anywhere either. They just get used to following you. Yeah. And if your dog breaks the position, you just pull them back into a heel and you can turn and go the other way. As you can see, a chasm is distracted. Your dog will get distracted in training. Uh, and if your dog does get distracted, I always create space for the distraction and, and lure away with food. Cassie. Heel. Once your dog's in a heel, reward them heavily for coming back and try and gain their attention again. Cassie. Heel. Good. And once your dog's attention is back on you, Cassie, heel. You can uh, carry on with the training. Yep. Good. Good. If they pull, you just bring bring them back into a heel and start again. Good. Yep. Okay, so step three is to put the training into practice in the real world. You can now start picking a point, so you can go out your house, pick a lane, uh, and start walking your normal dog route. But remember to stay consistent with when, what you're doing. So if your dog does start to pull and wants to sniff, just remember to pull your dog back into position and then carry on the walk from there. But remember to give your dog continuous breaks throughout the walk so that they can actually sniff, go to the toilet um, and be a dog. So moving on to the slip lead, I'd recommend starting with the Ramsey range if you've got a strong collar. But once you've become more experienced with lead walking and your dog is more proficient at it, I would recommend going on to the slip lead because it gains a little bit more control. Uh, so I'm just going to show you how to put it on. Okay, so when putting the slip lead on, I always get the dog in a heel position, otherwise you can mess it up, and have the lead so it flows to you. And it just slips over the dog's neck, uh, and you use the stopper to hold it in position, uh, and just make sure that when the dog's in a heel, it flows to you. If it's on the other side, it creates a kink in the lead um, and stops the, the lead from loosening. We start off in the same process, get your dog into a heel, your dog should be happy with the heel position now, so we can quickly go on to step two. I always recommend having it nice and high and tight on the dog. Not tight so it's um, putting pressure on the dog so it doesn't slip down. Uh, and then we just start walking like we do in the Ramsey range. Heel. We don't pick a point yet. We're still getting used to the dog um, walking on a slip lead. The reason why we don't use a slip lead straight away, or if your dog's a strong puller, because it doesn't have a limited slip and if your dog pulls it will just continue tightening oh continue tightening uh, until your dog releases that pressure good but this just gives you a little bit more control it's slightly thinner and it's nice and light in your hands and short the main aim of the training is just to be consistent um, and with time your dog will um, increase in their duration of walking on a lead 
Okay, so uh, step three is to put what we practice into the real world. You can now start walking your dog like normal. Just remember if your dog does start to pull, um, use what you've been doing in steps one and two to bring your dog back into a heel position, use plenty of reinforcement and carry on the walk like normal. But remember to give your dogs breaks so that they can sniff, be free and explore the world like a dog. Outside Bully Billows HQ today to review some products. No. Uh, we're going to be doing it. Cassie, puss. Yeah. Cassie. Cassie. Hey. We're going to be doing a lead walking video. Every time, same point. Are they